Good morning, Miss Betty. You can unmute yourself, Miss Betty. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Betty. How are you doing? I'm good. What about you? Hanging in here. Did y'all y'all safe over there through the storm last night? Yes, yes. There were some limbs fell from next door, but they didn't hit anything. Wow, I didn't hear a thing. I'm a, I guess I slept through whatever. I opened up the door this morning. I saw a few more leaves on the ground, but I didn't see any. Look like it might have not been that difficult on this end. Oh, okay. Well, look like we don't have any of our folks today. I hope everybody's all right. Yes, they might. Uh, they say it's a lot of power outages, so they might not have power, having yeah. problems getting on. Maybe so. Maybe so. Well, I'll give them a minute or two, and then okay. we'll go on and get started anyway. Well, I'm glad that nothing happened at your house and everything was all right. Yes. Where's Melly at? She's uh, with her other grandmother. Okay. I checked on them this morning. Okay. Well, we're going to go on and have our little discussion anyway. Okay. We don't let numbers stop us from doing anything. And what I have, well, I was going to do, try to do two things today. One, because these hurricanes that come that come up, I was going to talk uh, to everybody about some hurricane awareness things. Uh, this uh, they say there's no. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gurley. How are you? And that's you, Mr. Gurley, down there. You can unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, well, maybe he can't hear me. Can you unmute yourself? Isn't that you, Mr. Gurley? It's Steven. Mr. Thatch? Uh-huh. Yes, it says Thatch. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Hi there, Mr. Okay, okay. Is that Can you, you Mr. Gurley? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. Okay, we're going to be talking about, at the end, I'm going to go over some hurricane information just to sort of touch on. It's really been wild this hurricane season that they went all the way through the list of names they had selected for the year, ran out of names, and had to go to the Greek alphabet, and they're down to Zeta with that. And there's another one on the horizon. I just saw that on the news this morning. But we'll come back to that and talk about that briefly at the end of our class. Because what mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about today, we talked about this one time before, but I wanted to talk about stress because I just feel like it's just so much negativity going on. There's, everybody's under a lot of stress. I don't care mm -hmm. who it is, um, whether you're old or young, working, not working, everybody that's this, this this COVID-19, this racial disharmony, uh, this whole thing of uncertainty about the elections, which way that's going to go, that's providing a lot of extra stress on everybody, you know, because we get it on the news every day, all day long. You're hearing about one of these four <laughs> topics uh, and at length, when you go and kind of turn on the news in the morning early, you hear it, 12 o'clock news, the evening news. If you change, uh, some people like to listen to the MSNBC or CNN, you still find the same thing. Whatever channel you go to, whether it's Fox or uh -huh. Channel 11, whoever, you're still getting bombarded with all this information that causes stress. So what I thought we would talk about today, some things that we can do to beat stress. Don't let stress beat us, but we're going to beat the stress. Uh, you have to identify what triggers your stress. Um, what stresses you out? 
What's Miss Betty? What stresses you out in your day to day life? What's something that would stress you out? Babe, like you say, continuing to listen at the news and every channel you turn on, they are talking about the election and all of that. That'll stress you out if you continue to listen at it. Right. What so about I try you? to avoid that. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Gurley? Is there anything that stresses you out? The main thing that stresses me out is just not being able to get something done. Okay. Because I just can't get something done. That'll stress me out. Yeah, that, that, that's understandable. You know, we can't eliminate everything in life that causes us stress, but we can try to work on the ones that we know cause us stress and try to remove them so we won't be so influenced by stress. Good morning. Unmute yourself, Miss Dorothy. How are you? Unmute yourself, Miss Dorothy. I Hi, how it. are you? I am well. How are you? Good. We're talking about stress this morning again because it's just it's just between the hurricanes at every turn, COVID at every turn, Donald Trump at every turn. It's just so many uh, stress factors. So we just talked about we're trying to identify what stress what triggers your stress, uh, Miss Dorothy. Anything in life that triggers a stress for you? Not I try not to let things. I, yes, you know what? It's a shame to say politics. Yes. I am so sick of what's going on in this world of politics. I don't know what to do. I know. I couldn't have said that better. We just missed Dr. Miss uh, Betty just said the same thing, that this stress from this po political situation, racial disharmony, it, it, it's, 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 it's triggering stress in just about everybody, I would think. So some of the things, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about some things that we can do to kind of help us eliminate stress. You know what you do? Exercise is one of the best stress relievers out there. I'm constantly bringing that exercise yes. up because exercise can take mm -hmm. care of a lot of things. So even if you're not in a, in, a, in, a, in a class, exercise class, take a 10 minute walk. You can walk inside your house. You don't have to go outside to walk. If you got a a house like the way my house said, I could walk from, say, my front door through the kitchen to the dining room and come back around, make like an oval. And that would be, I could do that for 10 minutes. Or mm -hmm. uh, if you got a, a large living room, walk around your living room for 10 minutes. Anything you want to do, take a good 10 minute walk, and that's going to help you relieve some of that stress. Turn off that TV. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to the point, the minute I see Donald Trump's face, I just turn the, the volume down. I just don't want to hear mm -hmm. any more negativity. I don't want to hear any more, don't uh, concern yourself with things that science is clearly showing us that we need to be concerned. Mm -hmm. So that's a good time. When he starts talking, that's a good time. I'm going to take me for now, take me a 10 minute walk while he's talking. Talking, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> That makes sense. If you take that short walk, it's going to also help you clear your head, take your mind off of whatever crazy man is talking about. And when you take that short walk, it's going to boost the endomorphins in your body. And that mm -hmm. in turn reduces your stress hormones. So those are things that we can do. That's something that doesn't require being in a fitness class or anything. You can do that at home on your own time. You can be in the kitchen, you know, and just Walk around in your kitchen while you, you know, doing something. Walk from the kitchen back to the bathroom 10 times. Whatever type of exercise you want to do, that's going to help you. Okay. And research, you know, I love going to the research department. Mm -hmm. The research department told me that laughing decreases stress hormones, reduces artery inflammation, and increases HDL, the good chlor uh, cholesterol. Once you yeah, once you start laughing, it forces you to feel better. And since we mm. all have different senses of humor, just think about something that put a smile on your face. I try to, uh, that's one reason why I tell a joke every day after my fitness classes, to try to make sure everybody has a good laugh that day so that that can help decrease stress. Nothing beats a good laugh. You know, it's, most of the jokes I tell are corny, but hey, we still get a laugh off of them. So if you're during the day and you feel like you're getting stressed from the day-to-day -day activities of living, go back and think about something 
that maybe happened that, that was just too funny. I know Melly probably says some stuff sometimes that you just, because I know Melly been talking since she was a, not, a, and she can come out with some stuff, make you forget she's just a little bitty girl. Yes, she can. And make you, yeah. and make you smile. Mm -hmm. You know, or think about something maybe your spouse said that you said, look, where he get that from or she get that from. That's true. You know, and that's it'll make you smile. I think mm -hmm. about my grandchildren sometimes, my the youngest one that's autistic, sometimes he comes out with stuff, I just have to laugh. You know, I said, look, yeah. you know, all you can do is laugh. So let's try to make sure that this day, we try to keep a smile on our face and laugh our way through. Don't let anything stress us. The minute we feel it coming, we can take that 10 minute walk or we can just take a stop, take a breath and think about something that's happened that's funny to you. Mm -hmm. Now you be in church and maybe you saw somebody, this is what I know God gonna strike me for this. But I always get tickled when I see people shouting and they're supposed to be filled with the spirit and then they dress hike up and then they, in the middle of the spirit, they pull their dress back down. Uh -huh. <laughs> A straight hair. <laughs> but see, oh, oh. will make me put out laugh. You know, I'll be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I might think back to something like that, you know, something that's humorous. You know, that's not true. in a negative way, but it's just, you know, it's all that's always funny to me that, that you know you're supposed to be out of it spiritually, mm -hmm. but you know that dress is like something. Yeah, okay, next, breathe. Slow, deep breathing, if only for a couple of minutes, can dramatically decrease the tension which triggers that stress. So when you feel it coming, take a deep breath exhale and let it out now here's an exercise that you can try at home you want to take 10 breaths mm -hmm. and focus on your feelings of stress and anxiety while inhaling and then releasing and letting go on the exhale so when you take that deep breath whatever it is negative on the exhale let it come out take a second breath If I'm thinking about Donald Trump, you want to do that 10 times, thinking about whatever it is that's bugging you and let it out on the exhale of that breath. You want to breathe in and exhale that thought on the out, okay? That's the one that you can do. You want to exhale for six seconds and let it go while you're exhaling. And let that thought go, whatever that negativity, and just let it go. That's an exercise that you can, in fact, my grandson, I talk about him all the time, he's autistic. And that's uh, one of the things we've been working with him is because he gets, when he gets upset, you know, anything's not, the same way that it was the day before. He's got to have that order and he gets all upset. So we've been telling him, take a deep breath and count to 10 and let that, let that anger go because he can't control those uh, anger urges and impulses. That's what they're working on with him. So we are able to control ours. So take those 10 breaths and exhale and let that stress go right out your lips into the atmosphere. Okay. All right. Now you're not going to want to hear this one, but, and it's not for everybody. Get up earlier in the morning. According to the research department, uh, they did a study of 367 college students and found out that early risers perform better on their jobs. Early risers attain greater career success and made more money than those who started their day later. Getting up early and completing your task first thing in the morning allows you to focus on your to-do list sooner, which means you get done earlier and then you got time to do something you really enjoy, which then again will lead you to that smile because you'll be doing something you enjoy. So getting up earlier, don't lay there, as particularly now while we're all at home, you're like, well, I ain't got to get up. I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> get on up anyway. 
Set, remember, we've talked about this, setting those routines, writing down in your mm -hmm. diary the things, your planner, your diary or your day planner, the things you're planning to do that day. And at the end of the day, when you go back and look, you will feel a sense of accomplishment if you've accomplished all of those items and it's not six o'clock in the evening, you're just not getting through. Mm -hmm. And then you say, well, Lord, I'm just sitting to lay back in this chair. Get up earlier, put that smile on your face, deep breathe, let it go and work for releasing that stress, okay? All right. Next thing, which we talk about this all the time to help relieve stress, eat well. Our moods and our foods are closely linked. That is why when you feel down or stressed, a lot of people automatically what? Go get something to eat, comfort food. Um, Healthy eating improves your energy, makes you more productive, improves your physical and mental health. You want to avoid junk food and stick with fruits and veggies and foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. That helps uh, alleviate your mood. So I know that if, if when I would come home, uh, go home to visit my grandmother, you know, I don't care how tired I was. First thing I did was go to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator door, <laughs> see what grandmama got in there to cook, cook that's already, you know, macaroni and cheese you know those are comfort foods you know you always say couldn't nobody make potato salad like my mama or my mama dressing on thanksgiving you know uh all of those comfort foods help us to feel better on the inside but at the same time just like your mama your grandmama sweet potato pie recipe that doesn't mean sit down and eat the whole pie you eat a slice get a slice <laughs> and eat or uh, have a slice of pie, but don't sit there because you sad and depressed and feeling overwhelmed and eat the whole pie, okay? So we want to continue to eat well, okay? Another thing we can do is visualization. Uh, some people are better at that than others. Um, you want a, a short visualization in your mind can be the quickest path to getting yourself centered to just, get comfortable, like I'm sitting in this chair. I'm really comfortable when I sit down and talk with you guys. I'm, I'm in a com my comfortable chair. Uh, it's quiet. And then I can imagine the place or thing that makes me happy. So I, I was feeling sad if when you're at home and maybe somebody has wrecked your nerve and stressed you out, just, just go in the living room, go in your room. Where's that comfortable chair you got? And just sit back. Close your eyes and just visualize a happy place. Just let it go, let that stress go right on out past the visualization of your happy place, a peaceful place. If it's the beach, maybe you like going to the beach and whenever you're at the beach, the rocking and waving of the ro uh, of the waves, maybe that does it for you. Or maybe if you're one of those persons that likes, I like to, on my job, y'all know I work for the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, whenever people get on my nerves at the park, I walk down into the woods. There's a bench and some nature trails in the woods. And I will go down there and just sit down and close my eyes and just, you know, let those sounds around me, <laughs> excuse me, the nature sounds. I hear the trees rustling. I hear the birds chirping. I hear the bugs flying by. And that's very <clears throat> calming to me. And I just will sit there and let that take my mind to that calm place. I sit out there maybe 10, I've been known to sit out there a half hour because I was really fired up and just <laughs> come back after I've done that and I feel better, after I've sat there and visualized being in my comfort place and just meditating on the sounds around me. Also meditation, that has been proven time and time again of inward thoughts, you know, meditate along with deep breathing has been proved to reduce heart disease risk factors, including high blood pressure. And we're talking about meditations such as yoga or prayer, these are also effective in relaxing the mind and body. My biggest problem is outside stimulus tends to, I'm, I haven't been able to learn how to block out the outside. So like when I like to pray, I like to go in my prayer closet so I can be in there with no distractions and, and pray. 
uh, when I read my daily word before, a lot of times they'll say, take a moment to gather yourself. So I just sit there quietly for a few minutes to try to let the outside stuff just get away from me for a few minutes so that I can relax if I'm meditating, count on my breathing, listening to myself, breathe slowly in and out. It's not that easy to do, you know, but some people, you know, it's something to try. You know, anything that's gonna bring our blood pressure down or keep our heart rate at a constant pace, it's worth a try, okay? And when we, uh, uh, we do have yoga classes and yoga is harder than it looks. We do have yoga class. Uh, Kim from Darnell also teaches yoga. And I'm sure that um, probably some of the other instructors from our other uh, sister facilities probably also are teaching yoga. I don't know because we had so much to do. Each one of us at our various different centers, we have so much to do at our own center. Half time, we don't even have time to say hi to anybody because we're too busy, you know, taking care of our stuff. Hey there, Miss Sally Dawson. Now, this one is, this is so wild that this particular item that I researched just yesterday, they were talking about, I, I swear, they were talking about it just this morning on Kelly and Ryan. One of the techniques that the research department suggests is to do dry skin brushing taking a brush like a uh, like a bath brush that you might have, you could purchase and get them at the dock and and brushing up like this slowly and methodically all the way from the leg up the chest up your arms and it's often those brushes were designed to, to brush off dead since dead skin cells but it also activates waste removal via your lymph nodes and the act of dry brushing has been described as meditative, especially if you get somewhere quiet and sit down and do it in a quiet space. Just really, you know, just run that brush up and down your arms quietly with your brush. And if you calm your mind, it will reduce muscle tension, helps you calm your mind and relieve stress. Compare it to like a light body massage, but you're using a brush. You know, like the long handle brush you use for a shower. One of those that you can pick them up in the dial store. You just want to, or you just want to brush it. And no sooner than I looked this up yesterday, this morning on Kelly and Ryan, they were talking about doing this very same thing, dry skin brushing. I tell you, I'm learning stuff every day doing this class like this. I have one thing, I have more time to research the topics that I want to talk about. A lot of times when we were at the center, I had just enough time to pick the topic, get the information, but I didn't have time to really mull over it. Like I do these a week in advance. So I'm going to try, me person, I'm going to try that dry brushing thing now because I, I just, I know that I had a friend who had a child, a grandchild who was born with all kind of uh, disabilities. And one of the techniques that the therapist had recommended was brushing his arm with a brush. And of course, at the time, I didn't make the connection because they didn't explain it to me any further than you know that. But I can understand that now that that dry brush, I'm going to try it and I'm going to come back and let y'all know how it works. But I think it, there's, some, there's some validity to it, but like, not just because I just saw it on uh, uh, Kelly and Ryan this morning, but because I had just looked it up and the next thing I know, there it is, bam, they're talking about the same thing on television this morning. It's just amazing to me. So that's something else that we want to try. And this is one y'all going to love to relieve stress, chew gum. <laughs> the research department, <laughs> the research department said that a study in 2008 at uh, Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> discovered that chewing gum can reduce the stress hormone cortisol in your saliva by 16% during mild stress and about 12% during moderate stress. So go on out there and buy you some uh, juicy fruit. <laughs> no, <laughs> they got too much sugar. You, need buy, to, you can extra. buy the sugar-free, uh, what's the one? Uh, you can buy extra. You can do some extra, that's sugar-free. Yeah, okay. And get the whacking. Get the yeah. <laughs> it, it does, it does, because I do it sometimes. Okay. I got um 
pack some extra around here when I get stressed out. Okay. I'll go get me a piece of chewing gum. Well, now you've been validated because the research. Okay. <laughs> says that we need to use oh. gum. Yes, Miss Dorothy. Oh, uh, you have to be careful with that gum. I was out in California right after my husband died. I was popping the gum and uh, just smacking and going on. And I broke a cap <laughs> on one of my uh, teeth. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, I don't do it that hard. <laughs> Miss Dorothy, you a mess. <laughs> and my son said, Mama, why don't you stop popping that gum? But believe me. pop it. <laughs> I've never been able to pop gum, so. <laughs> you know the thing about popping gum, once you start, it's addictive. Popping that gum. Yeah. Uh, all right. I like it. That chew gum. All right, here's another, mm -hmm. another thing that I found out from via the research department. Instead of using positive thinking, the research department says that the psychologist says, do these four things, wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. This involves closing your eyes and imagining your wish coming true for a few minutes. So if I was wishing that I was gonna get a million dollars, okay. <laughs> I'm wishing, all right? And then you want to think about what is the main obstacle in my way of getting a million dollars, all right? Then you want to envision the action that would help you to remove the obstacle. So you want to you want wish, mm -hmm. what would be your outcome? What would be your obstacle? And once you figure out all those three, then you plan for what you're gonna do to obtain yeah. that goal. And that's supposed to help release stress as well. I'm telling you, the research department just chock full of stuff. Yes, All right? Yes. Get enough sleep. You know, we've talked about that many times. We've talked about it before. Get enough sleep. Sleep will help you to handle it. If you, if you wake up tired and irritable and then somebody, you know, pushes your triggers, you're gonna be, it's gonna be harder for you to handle the stress because you're already tired. So you want to get a good night's sleep. Here's another one from the research department. Buy a plant. And I know all of y'all probably got plants in your house. They help reduce stress and anxiety. And they recommend that you buy jasmine, lavender, skullcap, marjoram, and I hope I pronounced this right, chamomile. Did I pronounce that right? It's a chamomile. Chamomile. So uh -huh. buy you a plant. It's supposed to help reduce stress. Now, see, somebody like me, I killed one of them uh, cactus. Yeah, I killed a cactus, but that, that bamboo thing that all you're supposed to do is have to add water to it. Mine <laughs> died. Well, I killed a cactus. I, I, I don't know. My mother had a green thumb. My sister had a green thumb. Me? Yeah, I guess I went to the bathroom and God was passing it I, out. Me too, Miss Sally. I, I can't keep nothing I killed alive. a cactus, and all what you have to do is wipe them down a little bit. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last uh, one more, no, two more, count. Counting numbers gives your mind something mental to focus on instead of what's stressing you out. It can divert your thoughts and place you on a more serene track. And this is something I do with my grandson that when he's angry, we have him count to 10 so the focus is on the numbers, mm -hmm. not whatever that external situation that triggered him to have a meltdown. And this is the last one that's really important to release stress practice gratitude yes when it comes to increasing your happiness and improving your health health and coping with stress there isn't anything as powerful as gratitude the simple yeah. act of counting your blessings what you have to be grateful for will take mm -hmm. your mind away from stress and even in this terrible situation times that we're living in every night i like to think about how grateful I am to God for providing for me, mm -hmm. for taking care of family, friends, the Darnell staff, the Darnell participants, uh, the people I work with on my other job. I have so much to be grateful for that my mother is 86 years old and still with me. You just think about what you have to be grateful for in your life, yes. regardless of Donald yes. Trump, regardless of COVID, 
that God is still blessing us or whoever you call your creator. Everybody doesn't call on God, but whatever mindset you have to be thankful and be grateful for whatever you have, do that every day. And that in turn will help you not to feel as stressed because there's nothing better than the power of gratitude. And that's what I had for today. Um, All right about uh, relieving stress because we want us to stay healthy and stress will kill you. So you want we want us to stay oh, healthy yeah. and try to stay as stress-free as we possibly can. Mm, if yeah. anybody have any questions or anything. Mr. Girl, uh, your house came through <coughs> all right last night? Mm? Did you have any uh, trouble last night with the weather? No, not much down here. This is a real wind blue. We didn't always get any rain down here in uh, Union City. Oh, you live in Union City? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, right down here. Mr. Girl, you know I live in Fab and I'm right down, I must be right down from you. I guess I live off of Stonewall Tail or Derrick Road and Folsom Parkway. Oh yeah, I know where that is. Well, I live down in Fab, but I work in Union City. I work for the Recreation Department. That's why I'm all the time out. I, I work for Union City. Oh. Yeah, Miss Dante. Yeah, that's where I live. I live right down here in the woods. Oh, oh we didn't hardly get nothing down here. Yeah, we didn't get anything either. Miss Dorothy, your house okay? Everything all right? Okay, I just need someone to come and pick up branches and break leaves. Okay, now we talked about that yesterday, Tuesday. I Don't know. go out there doing all that extra hard work. You know, sometimes you have to call somebody to help you. You know, remember that those leaves are wet. That's a slippery hazard. So be careful when you go out there in your yard. Everybody, if you got leaves, be careful, sweep your steps off, your porch, you know, before you go out there, you know, because they're wet and they will be very slippery. That's all I had for today. I love each and every one of you. Don't forget tomorrow you. is the Fall Festival yes. Pumpkin Decorating Contest. Tomorrow, oh, thank you. Kicking off tomorrow morning. So get your costume together. Mm -hmm. Get your pumpkins ready. Kim and um, Ann yes, King Anne. and Kimberly Wright will be judging our pumpkin contest for tomorrow. So everybody get ready. And I will see everybody tomorrow with my costume on. I'm going to see how many of y'all will know who I am. <laughs> All right, everybody. See All right. Have a good one. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>